All right, good evening everyone and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream. I see quite a few people joining in already. Dash dash underscore dash ET phone, Mandy, resistance, resistance frequency, CP the brick, dot dimo, comrade questions, and flash flood. Thanks guys for joining in at the very start of the stream. Let's see, tonight is another special stream. At the beginning of every month, I usually have a sponsored stream of sorts. So tonight, tonight is another one of those. Um, welcome everyone to the Magic Group by News. This particular episode is sponsored by Divinity, as you guys can see at the bottom left over there. You guys can check them out by following either the sponsor link or the Divinity link. If you use discount code WIZARD, you can get 5% off. So what do I like about Divinity? Divinity is actually located down in California. Um, I'm located in Seattle, Washington, and Every, every time I've ordered from them, it's always arrived in like two days or less. And from what people have told me, even people on the East Coast have gotten it within three days. So they have super, super fast delivery. And at the same time, they have almost daily restocks. So if you guys were part of my stream, maybe about a week and a half ago, I unboxed the JWK Bluey switches. I know they look kind of yellow here, in fact. JWK Bluey switches looks looks what you would expect blue top blue bottom and my quick take on it was that it was a very smooth stock switch so if you guys don't like lubing and just want something that's great out of the box definitely check it out however the product that I am actually going to buy tonight after this stream is here we go is stabilizers actually I am a big fan of Owl Lab stabs there you go. Where is it? Owl Lab Stabs. I have switched to them from using Duroc V2s and they are currently on a small discount. So definitely check them out if you guys are interested. For those of you joining for the very first time, welcome to the weekly group by news. Um, unfortunately, this will be the last one for a while simply because I'll be returning home for a good month. I don't know what my internet situation will be there. So this could be the last. If not, I'll probably have some some kind of janky stream going on. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, welcome everyone. Um, this particular episode covers everything tonight, October 2nd, all the way till Saturday, October 8th. So everything keyboard related, be, be it keycaps, keyboards, dust mats, all fair game. Our very first ending group buy is actually expiring tomorrow. So not too much time left. Yeah, this is the Kikobo Beige and Dolch. Kikobo Beige and Dolch available on Mex and Co for 110 bucks for a full-size supporting key set. You can even see a few um, split space bars there and all of the common layouts in between. If you want to buy the Dolch base rather than the Beige base, it's still the same price. You also have Beige extensions for 16 along with Dolch extensions and CMYK and CMYW add-on modifiers. This one, if you wanted, wanted to go all in on this key set, you're looking to spend 300 bucks, base kit 110, and estimated time of delivery or shipping date is Q4 2022 to Q1 2023. I mentioned that I had never heard of Key Kobo before, so I was a little bit concerned that 110 bucks for a base kit was a little bit too much, you know? But from what I've heard in the grapevine, these are actually fairly decent. You know, they're not like GMK or like anything like that, but they're pretty decent. All right, the next key set that is expiring, this one is a set I've been staring at for a while. Still don't know if I'll, if, if I'll buy it, but I love the theme. This is Milky Way Paws, also expiring tomorrow on the 3rd. This is another one of those key sets which come in multiple base kits. You have the Latin base for 89, and you have the Hiragana base also for 89. You got 40s, novelties, Paws, alphas, international, space bars, numpad, and check this out. This is the main reason why I am most interested in this key set. <laughs> of course, you've also got the perfect pets desk mat. You got the catalytic desk mat, you know, and you've got metal artisans as well. Yeah, to go all in on this one, this one's this one's pretty pricey. Buying both base kits, all the artisans and all the desk mats, you're looking at roughly six hundred dollars. I love the theme. This is absolutely cute. But I also know that this is a purple set. 
So I tend to stay away from purple sets as I can't exactly see the colors. But you know, it's it looks so cute. You know, I might just buy it despite that. I get the novelties for 29 bucks in the Nia Dust Mat. That's probably what I would get. So 25 plus 29, roughly 55 bucks or so. Not bad. But yeah, cute set. Cute set. I guess I could put this on my Neong as well. I could get the novelties and put them up on my Neong. How are Milky Way? Um, I really like Milky Way actually. In fact, I've got quite a few. This is another set that expires tomorrow. Expected delivery time, Q1 2023. Basically the same time as the Kikobo set I just talked about. All right, the next set is a GMK key set. So this one's gonna take a while to, um, to um, get to us. But this one, we've got some time. This one expires on the 5th. So what, that's, uh, that's Wednesday. Yeah, this one is GMK Lilac on Black. 125 bucks for the base kit. This looks like it supports a full-size keyboard and with split spacebar support and common layouts in between. Very good. You've also got alternate alphas for 69, spacebars for 29, Nord UK support for 69, and a Hibby Metal Artisan for $45. 125 for the base kit, and to go all in, you're looking at spending about $330. And because this is GMK, expect delivery to be more on the longer side. The ETA right now is Q4 of 2023. As far as I know, those are the only three key sets that are expiring this week. So just as a quick recap, those three key sets are Kikobo, Beige, and Dolch. Um, Milky Way Paws, and last but not the least, GMK Lilac on Black. Out of these three key sets, which ones is the audience most interested in? If I had to pick Lilacs as comrade questions, Lilac on Black, yep, Lob, that's, that's funny, L-O-B, Lob, Paws, None, Lilac, L-O-B, definitely, None, it says Show You Sugar, Lilac, Pause if it was double shot, lilac. Man, double shotting the pause novelties would be intense. Isanagi says none. Logic says while it's safe, lilac. If it were me, you know, I'm gonna have to agree with the majority of the chat saying that lilac, like lilac really does look good to me. Like to me, it looks blue and black, but it still looks good to me. But in reality, I think the one that I would buy, like I said earlier, I'd probably just get the novelties for Milky Way Paws. I would get the novelties, because look, there's a meow key. How often do you get a meow key, right? And you know, th these are cute cats, but I'm not sure I would use too many of them. But yeah, this goes on my Neong. And I'd also get the Nya Desmet. Or maybe this one too. This one looks cute too. But I don't have too many like dark dust mats, so maybe I'll go for this. Yeah, I'll go for this one. Lilac with Nia dust mat and the metal enter artisan. Yeah, that's a good combo as well. Let's talk about keyboards next, actually. We have a few keyboards ending this week, starting off with the 40 Army. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. This one expires tomorrow on the 3rd. For 225 bucks, you get a 40% keyboard with arrow keys, a large rotary knob, and a couple of macros on the very top. Um, this, this also comes available in Cerakote. So you've got stone gray, navy blue, stormtrooper white, all those good things. Let's scroll through it really quick. What a forehead on that one, yeah, right? Look at that. I think this is a 40% I could actually use though. Yeah, one of my biggest complaints about 40s is that there's no arrow keys. <laughs> well, I guess people could say the same for 60%, but 60% has enough keys for me to actually replace some with arrow keys. This one's just... 40s is just no good for me. Now look at that. It, it does look like a pretty decent board though. And of course my um, internet here is... Oh, what the heck is going on here? Holy cow, it's like a scratch and sniff or something. <laughs> there we go, now it all showed up, there we go. 
All right, look at that. Oh, it's a center mount USB-C. Interesting. See, P3D has weird issues with full screen pics. Yeah, I've been noticing that. Right, okay, so this is the supported layout. Looks like if you really wanted to on a 40, you could go for a 7U spacebar or 6.25U. Um, I usually uh, promote using a split spacebar because it's already such a small board, you could use more keys, right? But look at that. The encoder is represented as a rectangle. That's funny. Yeah, check it out. This guy, 225 bucks, um, estimated delivery Q1 of 2023. In fact, pretty much everything I've talked about except the GMK set delivers in Q1 2023, so not bad. But yeah, check it out if you guys are interested. This is our first keyboard expiring for the evening, expiring tomorrow on the 3rd. Next up is not really a keyboard, not really a macro pad, but more of a lone rotary encoder. There you go. This one is the BNR1 R2 for 60 bucks. Or actually, the regular ones are only 50 bucks, but if you go for the brass bottom versions, those are $60. But yeah, this is basically just a single rotary encoder. As you guys can see from, from the pictures here, that, that is USB-C. Um, now, if you don't like the look of rotary encoders on your keyboards, but you could use a rotary encoder, this might be the keyboard for you. <laughs> look at that, looks, looks pretty cute. Looks pretty cute. So either 50 or 60 bucks, and it looks like since it's such a small thing to manufacture, they have an ETA of this December, December 2022. If I had to choose between the five different colors, I'm gonna say that I probably like the white top brass bottom the best. I kind of wish that there was a brass top version as well, so brass on brass. But yeah, check it out. Not really a keyboard, not really a macro pad. Expires tomorrow, 50 or 60 bucks. So you'd be wonderful, Sass. I'm gonna need to either upgrade my USB hub or my PC power supply at this rate. Too many things plugged in. There you go, check it out. Expiring on the third. Okay, next up, another keyboard expiring on the third. Everything's expiring tomorrow, apparently. But this one's all the way on Canon keys. So this is the DD40, another 40% keyboard. This one is designed by DD Decline, another Seattle YouTuber slash Twitch streamer here in Seattle. So definitely um, would, would highly recommend this. DD has done quite a number of different projects for the community. We actually had a Seattle meetup yesterday and was hoping to meet him, or I met him already, but was um, hoping to see him again, but he, he didn't come this time around. So yeah, a couple interesting things about this keyboard. Not only is it a 40% with LEDs and all that, but what caught my attention is that basically this is, like I've been noticing that within within the community, most keyboards use an Atmega 32U for a microcontroller. But ever since like 2019, 2020, we've started looking at other microcontrollers such as ARM-based ones or PCBs like this, which apparently use the the Raspberry Pi one. So yeah, this is this is really awesome. I don't have any boards that use the Raspberry Pi, or it's, it's not really called the Raspberry Pi microcontroller, it's just what I call it, but it's like, a, I forget the numbers after it or so. But yeah, really, really cool stuff here. Um, hope to one day own one of them. But here, it looks like it also uses a C3 daughter board. Awesome, very cool. And of course, if you wanted to change your aluminum top, you have different options as well, ranging from 75 to $85. See, Conrad said, this makes this board so much more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's very um, future-proof, like, um, with our firmware getting larger and larger, with more features being developed into it, I think, I think that the community as a whole needs to also improve our PCB so that these chips can support what these new features are. Available anywhere from 265 to 280. Estimated time of delivery is Q2 2023. So yeah, check it out. We'll take some time to get to you. 
you make the purchase. The last board is actually a board that should have expired last week, but um, I may have something to do why it hasn't expired quite yet. Here you go, this is the Aurium CP. If you guys tuned in on, was it Wednesday? Wednesday night, I was supposed to build one of these and yeah, it was a failed build stream. Not because I failed, but because the plate that they sent me was actually super tight fitting that um, the plate didn't fit any Durox. Uh, what else did I try? Owl Labs um, and Stabies. And I didn't have any other stabs to try, but those three did not fit on the plate. So I was like, okay, let's try switches. No switches fit either. So yeah, it was just like, okay, this, um, this plate is wonked, right? So um, St Studio Bomb actually messaged me and said that they would send me another one. So hopefully it arrives this week, because if it doesn't, I'm not going to be able to build this. But right now, um, they've extended the group buy to, I think, this, this coming Saturday, October 8th. And the cool thing about this is, it's actually seamless, and, and, and it's not seamless where you have to like take off all your keycaps to um, remove screws. This top bit right here, this golden bit right here, this is magnetic. If you're worried about my particular unit, my particular unit is actually a prototype as well, you know? So, which is why when I unboxed it, you'll see that the weight was like, it looked like it just came off of the CNC mill. So yeah, check it out if you guys are interested. RMCP looks like a very decent board, but you know, we'll see once I build it, right? And hopefully I can build it this week. Let's see, those are the four keyboards I know of that's expiring this week. Once again, that's the 40 Army, the BNR1 R2, the DD40, and the Orium CP. Out of these four keyboards, which ones is the group, is the audience most interested in? Let me know in the chat. Let's see, Orium, if I had to pick, says comrade questions. CP, 40 Army, and the encoder. Yeah, okay. Cool. DD40 is the most appealing to me. Why is the BNR1 R2 not using the V2 BNR2? I don't know. Be wonderful says decisions, decisions. <laughs> See, if it were me, if it were me, I already have an Orium, but even with that said, I'm not sure if I would go for it simply because the board is really long. Uh, for those of you who have watched my stream for a long time, you know that my specific preference is no longer than a TKL. So something like this is a little too long for my preference. Let's see. The DD40 is the one that actually interests me the most, simply because it's using that Raspberry Pi chip. Like I, I, I forget what its exact name is. I think it was like an RP to something, I forget. I could probably look it up in QMK. But yeah, this that's what interests me the most. And plus it's designed by Didi, and Didi's here. I, I like to support Seattle projects. Let's see, the BNR1, I think, you know, even for 60 bucks, this is a little too, what do you call it? I think it's a little too um, specific for my, for my use case, you know? So I'm not sure if this is something I'd really go for like if I had a spare 60 lying around sure why not but I also have boards that have rotary encoders that's kind of like a wasted thing for me let's see in the 40 army um I think it's cool but then again I'm not too much of a 40% user all right I'm gonna update the GB list command really quick then we'll move on to missed group buys see I would just get a macro pad with the rotary knob yeah there were a few on drop couple months ago or so. If you wanted to buy everything that I talked about during the ending group buy section, everything from beige and dolge keycaps from Kikobo all the way till the Aurium CP. So that's what, that's three key sets and four keyboards. You're looking to spend a grand total if you buy all of the premium options, every single kit, artisan, desk mat, and a key set, you're looking to spend a grand total of 
$2,274 to join all of the group buys that, that are ending this week. And don't forget that th that doesn't include shipping, customs fees, or taxes. So yeah, it could potentially be even more expensive than that. But guess what? It's still cheaper than last week because last week we hit 3000 So yeah, relatively cheap week. All right, let's talk about missed group buy. So last week we did have a few people ping me some things, but you know, every time, every time as like the week goes on, I find that there, 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 there there's still a bunch of stuff that we miss, either because it's from like a private Discord group buy that it was only announced there, or you know, it just wasn't put up anywhere. Maybe it's on Instagram, who knows, right? So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about a key set first. This one, this one is another manufacturer I have not heard of, but is also on, also being sold on ClickClack, which is a trusted vendor for me simply because, you know, they've made some awesome boards. But yeah, never heard of this one. This one's the Heikey Warrior Mark II. Daisa PBT Cherry Profile Keycaps. For 79 bucks, you have a TKL supporting base kit with some of the common layouts in between. No split space bar though. Let's see, you've also got novelties for 29, numpad for 19, spacebar for 18, and desk mat for 25. That's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, to go all in on this key set, you're looking at spending about 170 bucks. And it does deliver relatively quick. They're advertising an ETA of December 2022. With lots of colors going on in there, yeah. You can see that. I've seen like a lot of key sets that that actually put the row and the size of it on that. Like I'm not sure if I like this um, aesthetic, right? But it seems to like it seems like a lot of key sets are starting to do this. You see that on the enter key, row two, two point two five u. Yeah, I'm not sure I like that. I. You know, I, I like the fact that it tells you what row and the size because I think that's very helpful for someone who's new to the hobby. But maybe if it was like printed on the back or maybe just like a certain... Well, I know I know some, some manufacturers do indeed do that. But I think this is just a little too much. Looks okay. De definitely not my style, but it looks okay, I guess. <laughs> And yeah, 79 bucks for the base kit, 170 to go all in. Estimated time of delivery, December 2022. Okay, inspired by the mecha theme. Yeah, I've never heard of Hey Key before. But look at that, they're available on Aloha KB as well and Click Clack. All right, dust mat. Did we see the dust mat? Okay, here we go, that's the dust mat. That one was 25 bucks. But yeah, this one, we missed it from last week. It started last week and it's running till October 24th. So got a, got a few weeks before it expires. The next thing that I missed is actually a keyboard. This one caught me by surprise. This is the Minerva. 60% full isolation sleeve gasket keyboard featuring a minimal design language, five row macro column and hidden screw assembly. Check it out, check it out. So yeah, you've got different options available here, but it goes anywhere from 470 bucks to $537. Oh yeah, this one's even more expensive, 525 to 592, so pricey. I want more pictures, give me more pictures. This seems like a 65 with more steps. You are not the first to say that. Like, honestly, I wish I wish the macro keys were on the left instead of the right. But this looks gorgeous. This is a very beautiful looking board. Yeah, Heritage looks really good. Let's see. You, got, you can buy extra weights or Storm, Royal. There we go. Royal. Carbon. Carbon looks good too. Yeah, this one has an estimated delivery time of Q2 2023. 
Yeah, quite a long delivery time as well, but still earlier than GMK Lilac on Black. Ranging from 470 to 537 on the on the non-heritage ones, and for the heritage one, 525 to 592. So very, very expensive. Yeah, check it out if you guys are interested. This one you have until the 15th to make your decision. All right, next up. This one's another Keychron board. Keychron is just spitting out boards every month. But here we go. This one is the Keychron Q10. We missed it last week. I believe it went live on the 27th. So this one is running to October 27th. Yeah, this is a Alice style board with leftmost macro keys. And the rotary encoder is also on the left. In, in contrast with the, I forget, was it the Q8? Yeah, in contrast with the Q8, where it had the rotary encoder on the right, this one has it on the left instead. So the, depending which way you want it. See, this is the Q8, more of the traditional layout with the rotary encoder. And then now you've got this one right here. Macro keys on the very left. And I'm glad that they labeled it M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Pretty nice. But yeah. Oh, yes. And Efro as well, as you guys can see from the top there. Oh, 75% Alice, definitely. Um, one of the reasons why I personally like 75 is because it makes it more compact. I think this one kind of defeats the purpose of the 75. You know, are Keychron's Via compatible? Yes, they are. Whether or not it's actually in Via will be a different story, but as long as you have the appropriate QMK or Via enabled QMK firmware that's flashed on the board paired with the appropriate Via JSON file, it will work. Hopefully this shows up at Divinity. Yeah, hopefully it does too. Yeah, here, let's look at a couple more specs. But honestly, if you guys have seen any of my videos on Keychrons or if you've ever owned a Keychron, pretty much basically it. You know, it's 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 got that double gasket design. It's got like those same keys. It has that same aesthetic. You know, it's got the, let's see, I wonder, does this one have the, have the switch? Yes, it looks like it's got the switch there too. So you can switch it to Windows or um, Mac mode. Yeah, there we go. I can see the switch there on this picture. But yeah, if you've ever had a Keychron before, it's gonna be pretty much like it, unless you've owned the first edition Q1s. Like when they first made the Q1, they, um, so I gotta give it to Keychron, right? So they made a Q1, which was already awesome, but then they made like a V2 of it, just because people were like, okay, I think it's missing this, it's missing that. And they took the community's advice and implement it and then they pushed that those those same implementations on on towards their other keyboards that is the q2 q3 and like all of that stuff see i see keychron as being very beginner friendly keyboards oh absolutely the price is also amazing like the q10 that we have right here costs 215 dollars so it's it's not cheap but $215 for an all metal keyboard in a very unique layout with QMK, with VIA, rotary encoder, USB-C, yada, yada, yada. $215 is pretty darn good. Yeah, look at that. See, QMK, VIA support, double gasket. It's got all of the, all of the custom keyboard hype words and all that. So yeah, check it out. You've got until the, the 27th to make your order, but you know, it's Keychron, right? So it'll most likely be in stock either on Keychron themselves or on your favorite local Keychron seller. There you go. First item that I wanted to talk about in stock is actually a board I have been staring at for some time. The original Brutal series were all top mount boards. In my opinion, while they were a good value, they didn't really look aesthetically pleasing to me. But then again, I'm not a big fan of the Brutalist architecture design. This is the Brutal V2 65%. And one thing that's interesting is, um, I think rather than the Brutal just being one particular board in their lineup, I think they're starting to call 
all their boards brutal because now you have a brutal 65 percent so yeah these are designed by io3 beautiful board look at that those are all the parts that come with this see it sounds and looks so much better than v1 oh yeah i would imagine so look at that the pcb has a flex cut i believe the original brutal had a the brutal was a 60 percent the equivalent to this would have been the Savage 65. And the Savage 65 did not have a flex cut, did not have flex cuts on the plate either, or a weight, or a daughter board, or any additional foam or gasket. So yeah, definitely gonna be a much nicer looking board. Nicer looking and nicer feeling and sounding, in my opinion. They so yeah, had 350 bucks currently in stock. So check it out if you guys are interested. The next item that I wanted to feature for my in-stock segment is, here we go, Magic Girl Switches. There we go. The reason why I like these is mainly because I like the theme, Magic Girl Switches. I'm, a, I'm, I'm big on magic. And number two, I have been exceptionally pleased with the JWK Switches. That matching Millennium Switch sticker. Yeah, it's a very nice color right here. It's like, you know, I care about switch color, but I also understand that once I put it in a board and once I put keycaps over it, it's not really gonna matter unless I somehow build some kind of a low profile keyboard, which is, I've not built a low profile keyboard since, probably not since 2017. But yeah, these have no factory lube and they have 56G long spring three stage Let's see i wish it would tell me what the top and bottom are made of but i would assume it's some type of nylon <laughs> polycarb top housing nylon bottom okay i was half right and palm stems fun fact this is currently susan's favorite switch configuration in her daily driver there we go so yeah polycarb top nylon bottom that sounds like a alpaca alpaca of sorts with with a much heavier spring and no factory lube. Baby says, do you prefer solder than hot swap? It really depends what I'm doing. As a streamer, um, I actually prefer hot swap because it's much easier to do while I'm talking to the audience. When I have to solder something, I'm like, you know, I have to talk to you guys, I have to solder, I have to figure out how the board comes together. So it's a little bit more, more difficult, a little bit more tedious. So I prefer hot swaps when building for an audience, which is, really the only time I build. If I'm building on my own, like without an audience, just for my own preference, for my own joy of building keyboards, then I greatly prefer solder. But yeah, these are the two items that I'd like to feature for my in-stock segment. Let's talk about starting group buys and the one keyboard that I found. This one expires on the 10th. This is the Series 6. XX. This is another 60% with macro keys. If you liked the, hold on, which one was it? If you liked the, the uh, Minerva, but you don't like macro keys on the right, and you and you want more macro keys, then check out this board, the Series 6 XXX. Let's grab some specs on this guy. This guy is $420 compared to the well. The Minerva at its base is 470, so the Minerva isn't that much more expensive, to be honest. But yeah, you can choose between win key or win keyless, color green, navy, silver, red, purple, or pink. Your plate can be either ANSI or ISO. And a couple of specs here: 150 units available. Estimated time of delivery: Q1 or Q2 2023. I'm gonna say. Q2 2023, always good to pick the later date. Six degree typing angle, 60% with XT column, adjusted front height of 19.1. That seems pretty high. Usually for 60s, I, I tend to prefer more on the 18 millimeter side. Let's see. MX and Alps compatible, interesting. Okay, you don't get too many of those these days. Well, I guess with more Alp sets coming out, like what, there was that white on black Alp set that expired last week, then you could put it on this, yeah. Stock Alu 5052 plate, internal brass weight, 
external clear coded. Oh, perfect. I'm glad when like vendors mention what what's coding the weight. Usually you just see brass weight, but nothing coding it or like anything. See top mount standard with optional gummy mount included. Interesting. Okay. All boards will ship with the hard carry case. That's good. Hopefully they provide a picture of the hard carry case. See any more pictures of this guy? Okay, that's an artistic shot right there, but doesn't show me what the back looks like. Let's go see the back. Nope, there is no pictures of the back. Let me see if Geek Hack has any. Look at that, there we go. Okay, side profile is very important for a keyboard. So I'm kind of sad that they didn't show that on the main group by page. There you go, this is the back. Okay. External stainless steel brush is being updated to polish, but I like this. We'll test regular sandblasting. Yeah, I tend to like brushed finishes better too. Makes it look more classy in, in my opinion. Internal brass weight, oh boy. Cool, 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 420 bucks, yeah. Here, let me just put this in the group buy list page along with the Geek Hack page. What is that, is that Hamon? Nope, that's not Hamon, that's the... I forget, that's the Korean flag set, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Corsa size, but wanted something with a much softer aesthetic. There we go, Red Devils, ah, okay, okay. GMK Red Devils. Cool. Anyway, as far as I know, that is the only key set or the only keyboard that is starting this week. I couldn't really find another key set that was starting. So let's see what the audience says. This is the perfect time to move on to the audience group by section. All right, let's see. I see a couple of people sending me stuff. Let's start off with Mo Hubbus. Here you go, this is the moment. Yeah, I'm running from yesterday apparently, October 1st, and is running till October 16th, where the sale will happen. Well, it, w it already went live. Solder kits for 460, hot stop kits for 470, but this is a 60% keyboard. Half gasket isolation, 6063 aluminum, stainless steel. It's gotta be stainless steel weight, it can't be a stainless steel body, right? But weight's gonna be 1.7 kilograms or 3.7 pounds unbuilt. Seven degree typing angle. Cool, there we go. Front height 17.9. Yeah, this is the kind of 60% that I like. I don't like anything higher than like, like, like 19 is a bit too high for me. Let's see, mounting system. Oh, okay. Half isolation gasket mount. The add-ons available, solder and hot saw PCBs, that's good. Carbon fiber plate, awesome. PP half and full plate. Oh, I got a, yesterday I got a chance to type on a polypropylene plate for the very first time. And honestly, I couldn't really tell a difference between polycarb and palm, but you know, I feel like they're so similar that it's hard to tell. Okay, cool, looks like a really decent 60%. Who's next here? This one is sent to me by Comrade Questions. This is the Hibiki, 365 bucks. You can choose between the very hibby chalk. Oh, the chalk looks beautiful, wow. Office beige, snowboy, nice. Yeah, 65% keyboard. Um, according to Comrade Questions, this one's already running and is ending on November 12th. Alu top polycarb Polycarb base, oh nice, okay. Six degree typing angle, isolation mount with Poron foam pads, dang. Looks so nice. Six degree typing angle, polycarb base, thick injection molded polycarb, okay. Post machine to remove markings and finish with additional polishing, nice. Using a Wilbatech Hibby PCB WT65, okay. Oh yeah, this is definitely my um, type of aesthetic. Thick bezels, yeah, I know. That's that's what gets me. I don't think I've got a 65% that has thick bezels that... Well, actually I do, but it doesn't sound very good. 
or type very good. I, I guess I could try rebuilding it, but uh, this one just looks so nice. Let's see, helicopter says, I'd have to get that chalk just because I don't see it very often. Yeah, I know, right? Chalk, the chalk colorway is not very beautiful. Of course, this is just a render, you know, so it's not going to like exactly match what it looks. But that's just so beautiful. What sensors go with the chalk? Um, GMK Amazing Chocolatier is the first one that comes to mind. Um, I, I actually think a beige set would look good on this too. You know, a beige set would look good. It gives it that milk chocolate feel. <laughs> See what else? Um, a black set as well. Sloth. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess sloth would look good too. Cafe, maybe Norse, maybe. Yeah, but definitely the chalk colorway is going to be the one to get, or at least in, in my opinion, it's the one to get, unless you absolutely don't like brown. But yeah, check it out. Let's see, next one up is Transparent Joker. Go for 119 bucks, they have the Type 9. Treasure's been around for quite some time and they keep making these macro pads. I think there was like a type three at one point. I'm gonna check it out. Aluminum and white, aluminum and black. Let's see, what's unique about this? Fully programmable, nine key keyboard. Actually, let's just see what, let's see what Transparent Joker says. He just says it started last Friday, last for three weeks and ships early Q2 2023. Okay. QMK and VIA support compatible with Windows, Mac OS and Linux also works on iPad. Oh, interesting. I guess, you know, not too many people call out specifically that a board works with an iPad or, or like any other tablet. I think that's cool. So you crafted from 6061 aluminum or solid brass. Ooh. 99 for aluminum, 159 for the full brass. Though I would like thicker bezels on this, to be honest. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Transparent Joker. But right, here we go. Flash Flood says that there's a pre order for Fiel and Clippa T keyboards. Here, look. Let me just post that up. Here we go, Fial for $309, check it out. Available in E-White, Ultramarine, Gray, Silver, Black, Ultra Forest, Purple. Yeah, so the Fial is one of the more popular tray mount boards, I'd say. I had one for a while as well. Absolutely gorgeous, but I think I just grew out, out of the tray mount phase. 309 for a tray mount in 2022 is asking a lot. I would agree with you on that. Yeah, this one's a cheaper, cheaper tray mount board. Same deal, just not as good looking. Not as good looking, in my opinion. Same, same colors even. Ultramarine, gray, silver, black, ultra forest, and check it out this one. E ultra hot, interesting. E red, I, I'd say. Yeah, this one doesn't have the weight that the Fiel has, and it doesn't have the chamfered edges as well. But yeah, check it out if you guys are interested. So Bree sent me the Ash Keeps one, but we're going to do it through keepsforallkfa.com. So yeah, basically the Driss 65. I've actually been looking at this board as well. Like, I don't need any more keyboards, but some boards just look so beautiful to me. Look at that, 65%, 178 bucks. Estimated shipping date, Q1 2023. But this one runs till October 3rd, as you guys can see over here. So that's that's tomorrow. Six degree typing angle, PCB gasket structure, USB-C daughter board. There are flex cuts on the PCB and plate. And this one's probably one of my favorite ways of gasket implementation, gasket jackets or socks and supports. PCB stabilizers it needs a better name. I would agree with you. I I heard from last stream that it was originally going to be called the Iris because it's designed by a group called Iris. 
Oh, here we go. Ivis Lab, right? Iris Lab, but there is already a board called the the Iris, actually. So they didn't want any overloaded names there. Yeah, if I were going to buy this, I'd go for the yellow and black version. Yellow and black version. There are other ones as well. There's navy and black, maroon and black, but for me, yellow and black looks the best. What if they quote it the pupil? <laughs> All right, thank you much. Be wonderful. And last but not the least, Wilfer DG. This was supposed to have ended last week, but looks like it's still going on. This is the XOX70. If you guys remember, this is the F Rollless TKL, which a lot of people were really, really into. So 365 bucks, you can choose between a variety of colors, Shadow, Dream, Sunny, Bonsai, Atlantic, Bordeaux. You can choose between soldered or hot swap PCB or win key or win keyless. Let's see a couple specs on this guy. Eight degree typing angle, two internal brass weights, a screwless exterior design, so seamless design, gasket, leaf spring mounting. And yeah, overall, just uh, in my opinion, very beautiful looking board. Let's look at a few more pictures here. If you've liked TKLs, but you never really had a use for the function row, then this might be the board for you. Very tempting, yeah. Let's see, apparently... The group buy is technically done, but it's been extended to... Let's see, did Wilfer tell say anything? Nope, Wilfer did not say when it was ending, and there's nothing on the website either. Solder and hot swap PCB, okay, also comes with the carrying case, very nice. That Bordeaux, yeah, this looks beautiful too. All of the colors look great on this board. Look look at that bottom. That's so nice. But $365, holy cow. So yeah, earlier someone mentioned that $300 for, for a tray mount such as the Fiel seems a little bit overpriced. Here, let's go back to it really quick. Here, $309. You can either get a tray mount 60 with brass weight like the Fial, or you spend, what, 50 bucks more, roughly, and you can get an XOX70, right? I would agree that $309 for a tray mount such as the Fial seems quite pricey in, in 2022. All right, thank you very much, Wilfer. This last one is from Crosswind. This one's another PBD fan set. Here we go, this one is from Crosswind. 75 bucks, you have PPD fans, Klein Blue, according to Crosswind. It's an ABS set, semi-transparent blue, similar to neon, but bright blue and not dark gray. Interesting, oh, I can see the stems. Yep, this is semi-transparent. This actually looks pretty decent. Look at that, I like that. Yep, I like that a lot. You know, not that I've typed on my PBD fans neon for a long time, but I think once you have transparent caps like this, it kind of hides the ABS shine. Yeah, striker vibes. Oh, absolutely, especially with the uh, Japanese sub legends. You're waiting for it to hit Divinity. Yeah. Okay, I might have to get this set. This. This set looks lovely, and since it's only 75 bucks, hmm. Here we go. Mo Hubba sent me something here. Here we go. This one is the Tetra from Mo Hubba. Uh, looks like it's a 60%, and according to what Mo Hubba said, uh, he didn't say anything, so okay. Let's see, product is not in stock, pre order shipping in six to eight months. Okay. Let's look at this. Win keyless keyboard. So it's a WKL60, 19 millimeter front height, five degree typing angle, nine millimeter top and bottom bezels. Okay. Tadpole leaf spring or O-ring sandwich mount. Wow, I have not heard tadpole leaf spring before. That's interesting. So kit includes a Heine H60 hot swap with USB daughter board, nice. Okay, stainless steel external weight, wow. 
Lots of premium materials on this. Cool. 65% Gion feet. Nice. Here, let's look at other pictures of this. There's plum. Ooh, lavender. Plum. Okay, great. Both colors I can't really see. <laughs> but $400. $400 for a... Yeah, I guess for me, since I'm not a big wind keyless user, like I greatly prefer having like a wind key. So that's probably like the only thing that's making me not like this board. But in terms of aesthetics, it's definitely spot on. This is this is a 60% I would buy if I was still into 60s. Actually, hold on. The 19 millimeter front height, that might be a little too high for me. But five degree typing angle. Uh, guess that could work. Five degree and 19 millimeter front height. Yeah, that could probably work for me. Limiting with only WKL. Yeah, well, it looks like no one else is sending me stuff. All right, let's talk about all the group buys that you guys sent in. The moment, a 60% keyboard. Let's see, the Hibiki, a 65% keyboard. The Treasure Type 9, 9 key macro pad. The Fiel Tray Mount 60 with brass weight. Another Tray Mount 60 with no brass weight called the Clippa. The, the Driss 65, expiring tomorrow. The Exo X70, which is still on Group Buy even though it was supposed to expire last week. Um, PBD Fans Klein Blue, actually currently in stock. And last but not the least, the Tetra Keyboard. Tetra Keyboard, 60% win keyless only. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. As I said, this is potentially the last group by new stream for probably the next month. As many of you, of you know, I'm returning home to the Philippines to unknown internet connectivity. So no, I will be working from home. So hopefully the internet is fast enough at least for that. But in terms of actually streaming, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll try, but we'll see. No promises. Uh, in the Philippines, I'm mainly there to visit family, but at the same time, um, there's going to be a mechanical keyboard meetup there. This will be my first international keyboard meetup, if you don't count Canada, you know? So yeah, I'll, I'll be there if you guys happen to be in the Philippines around that time, come and say hi. This will not be my last stream of the week, okay? I still have a build stream to do. I still have to do the Aurium CP and the Freebird 75. So definitely keep an eye out this week. This will just be the last group by new stream. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a good start to your week. I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye, everyone.